And we have a strange story that's happening right now. Police are trying to track down a black bear spotted running loose through a Gresham neighborhood. The bear was spotted near Northeast 16th Court about 2.20 this afternoon. That's not far from a very busy area of town near Burnside. Police are trying to find the bear and trap it. So far, they've had no luck. We will keep you updated on this story. Hello everyone and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock. It is the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend. And normally many of us would be looking forward to some kind of special holiday plans. My husband and I were planning to travel to Florida to see an older cousin I haven't seen in years. And she was really excited we were coming. Of course, that's been canceled. And I know a lot of you have had to change your plans too. But we are looking ahead. Things are starting to open up. And as they do, remember to stay safe. And we thank you for joining us on this journey. Here's what's happening on this Thursday, May 21st in the news. And on the subject of vacations, nationally health experts are still advising people not to take them. And under phase one of Oregon's reopening plan, non-essential travel is still not allowed. That said, cities are voting to open up hotels. The state of Oregon is weighing opening campgrounds and that holiday weekend is upon us. So what does that all mean for you? Here's Maggie Vespa. First things first, Memorial Day. Governor Kate Brown and 26 Oregon mayors are urging people to stay home this weekend to avoid spreading the virus. That includes mayors in cities up and down the coast, Bend. Waterfront Park is not open. The event site is not open. And Hood River. Eventually we're going to be ready, but we're really not ready for a big influx of people to be coming at all. After the long weekend, several Oregon hotspots, including Deschutes County and cities on the coast, will be authorizing short-term rentals, meaning they're letting hotels, resorts, and Airbnb-type properties accept guests. But remember, most Oregon counties just entered phase one of the reopening plan, meaning non-essential travel is still prohibited, especially from the Portland area, which has yet to enter phase one. Who would be in the hotels? Very few. Um, we aren't expecting a lot of people to travel. If somebody needs to, uh, to stay somewhere, uh, let's say they've got uh, somebody in their household that's sick or somebody that um, just needs to get away, gives them the opportunity that they can rent a room. A similar take from Alice Steller, who owns an Airbnb in Coos Bay called The Crow's Nest. She's hosting a woman right now who's about to have a baby and wanted to be closer to the hospital. But Steller can't be sure everyone is following the state's rules. The day phase one happened, we saw so many out-of-state plates. Um, tons of plates from Idaho, tons from California, tons from Washington, so it's really busy. Moving forward, Stellar says she'll follow Airbnb's plan, pushing hosts to deep clean and wait at least a day between guests. The company is also letting guests who booked before March 14th cancel and get a full refund. But for those booking after, with full knowledge of the pandemic, there's no guarantee you can get your money back if restrictions tighten up again. The company is leaving that up to each host. Finally, today, Oregon State Parks announced it will reopen some campgrounds June 9th for limited overnight camping. They haven't decided which ones. A list is expected by the end of the month. Maggie Vespa, KGW News. An inmate at the Oregon State Penitentiary has died after testing positive for coronavirus. The man died at a hospital yesterday. Health officials say he was between 50 and 60 years old. There has been a surge of coronavirus infections at the state penitentiary in Salem. As of Tuesday, 115 inmates and 26 staff members had tested positive for COVID-19. Just a week earlier, 57 inmates had tested positive. The Department of Corrections says prison facilities are being cleaned numerous times a day and every inmate has been offered two masks. Prison officials say they're doing their best to keep inmates at a safe social distance. Despite some moves to reopen the economy, unemployment numbers are still high. Nationwide, more than 2.4 million people applied for unemployment last week. Claims are trending downward from their peak in April, but the total number since March 21st is whopping number. It's 38 million. In Oregon, more claims were filed last week than the week before. Last week, almost 16,000 new claims were filed. The week before, it was just over 14,000.
And now for Washington State, they saw another spike in claims too. Almost 260,000 new claims last week, compared to about 213,000 the week before. Many self-employed and contract workers in Oregon are still waiting on financial help. They hoped a new program launched in late April would help, but three weeks later, many are still waiting for benefits and nobody seems to be answering their phone calls. The program called Pandemic Unemployment Assistance is supposed to provide financial support to people like Nina Sage. She's a professional photographer who had to close her business two months ago. Uh, there's going to be no money after I pay rent June 1st. I'm pretty much empty pockets. You know, I, I've got just barely enough to cover rent. I don't even have enough to cover all my utilities. KGW spoke with 59 applicants of the PUA program in Oregon. Many of the jobless workers expressed both frustration and confusion. A spokesperson for the state employment department said claims are being processed and paid. She reminds us the program has only been up and running for three weeks and it's been swamped with applications. With record unemployment levels, organizations in our community are trying to help job seekers, especially those who might need a little extra help. Christine Pitawanich has the story. Yeah, after the uh, pandemic happened, that's when things slowed down a lot, so. Nehemiah Head means he was laid off from his lab tech job at Portland Community College. He'd just graduated from a program to pursue a new career in the heating and ventilation field. Then the pandemic hit, and like so many people, Head is now looking for any job. I've applied to warehouses. Uh, I've applied to uh, grocery stores. To help in his job search, he got a computer and internet access through Central City Concern, an organization which focuses on transitioning people out of homelessness and into self-sufficiency. You don't have to go out there and spend money that, you know, you need to set aside, you know, to maintain, especially during this time. It means a lot. Central City Concern is just one of a number of community organizations offering computers and internet thanks to another nonprofit, Work Systems, which coordinates with state agencies and community organizations. We partnered with uh, Comcast in their Internet Essentials program and purchased about 400 com computers and internet access. He knows that's a drop in the bucket. The need for jobs and internet connectivity is so great. Andrew McGough says they're brainstorming ways to bring help to more people. We have a bent towards working uh, with organizations that serve populations who are struggling to reconnect with the labor market or um, have been underserved in the past. Head is grateful for the help. A beautiful girl. Especially since he's also dad. Right here, right here. To seven-year-old Naya. Yes, indeed. He's hoping employers give him and the many others in the same situation a chance. Can't wait to, you know, start working for you guys. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Work Systems has also given $10,000 grants from state money to more than 40 community organizations in Multnomah and Washington counties. The idea to keep employees working so they can serve people who need help. Two days after Election Day, the race for the Democratic nomination for Oregon's Secretary of State is still too close to call. The results show Shamia Fagan leading Mark Haas by just under 2,000 votes. On election night, Haas took a big lead over Fagan, but as counties counted more ballots yesterday, Fagan jumped over Haas. KGW political analyst Len Bergstein says we'll probably know the clear winner by the end of the week. A lot of the early voting uh, showed him in the in the lead because he had run that kind of campaign. Uh, Shamia Fagan was financed heavily by the public employee unions and ran a very heavy advertising campaign towards the end and kind of caught up to Mark in terms of the momentum of the race and the votes uh, reflected that as they were tallied, the later votes coming in. A recount would be automatically triggered if the first place candidate leads by a fifth of a percent or less. The Secretary of State's office says that would be determined after votes are certified on June 18th. And an update on the race for Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler and Sarah Iannarone will officially go head to head in a runoff election this November. Wheeler needed to hit 50% of the vote plus one to win the primary, and he received less than a percentage point under 50%.
If you're still catching up on all the results, you can find them at kgw.com elections. You can also find them on your KGW News app.